one dimensional wave equation in this module we will discuss derivation of one dimensional wave equation and its solution to derive this partial differential equation let me consider an elastic string stretch it to the length l and fix its endpoints let us take the endpoints as the origin o and a point a on the positive x axis so every point on this string experiences two tensions so one is towards the origin o and the other one is towards the point a now disturb the string from its equilibrium position oa the string begins to vibrate in the vertical direction now by solving this one dimensional e wave equation which we are deriving will get u of x comma t which will give us the deflection or this transverse displacement of the string due to vibration at a point x and at time t now let me consider an element pq of length delta x such that op is equal to x and oq equal to x plus delta x now following assumptions will help us in deriving this one dimensional wave equation assumption number 1 the string is perfectly flexible and offers no resistance to bending two points on the string move only in vertical direction there is no motion in horizontal direction see vibration will be in the vertical direction but the energy moves from energy moves moves in the horizontal direction please keep that in mind but right now we are not interested in talking about the energy we are just interested in talking about the deflection or the transverse displacement and the third assumption is gravitational forces on the string is neglected okay so now let me consider this assumptions one by one first assumption says the string is perfectly flexible and offers no resistance to bending which means the tension in the string is tangential to the curve of the string at each point which means we are saying that at every point on the string the tension is considered or the tension will be acting in the tangential direction right now we are interested in at every point actually at every point tension two tensions will be acting we know that one tension is towards o other tension is towards a now right now we are interested in talking about this element pq with respect to this element pq let me assume t1 is the tension which is acting on this element at the point p and t2 is the tension which is acting on this element at the point q since the tensions t1 and t2 are the forces these are vectors vector quantities so let me resolve them into its comp into the components that is when the alpha is the angle that t1 makes with x axis t1 cos alpha becomes the horizontal component and t1 sin alpha is the vertical component and with t assuming beta is the angle that t2 makes with x axis t2 cos beta is the horizontal component t2 sin beta is the vertical component so now let me move to the assumption number 2 points on the string move only in vertical direction there is no motion in horizontal or longitudinal direction so that just says that sum of the forces in the horizontal direction must be equal to zero that is the sum of the forces acting on the element pq in horizontal direction must be zero that is given by minus t1 cos alpha plus t2 cos beta equal to zero here minus t1 cos alpha is taken here t1 cos alpha is the magnitude and since t2 cos beta is taken as the positive direction so i am taking that t2 cos beta is moving in positive direction as a result since t1 cos alpha moves in the opposite direction i should go with the negative sign for this or if i consider t1 cos alpha is moving in positive direction i should take t2 cos beta as the negative one so right now 
I am taking the things which are moving towards the positive x positive uh, x axis as t to positive. So this becomes positive expression, and this one will be the negative one. So minus t one cos alpha plus t two cos beta equal to zero. That says t one cos alpha is same as t two cos beta. Let me just assume it as some capital T. Now let us move to our third assumption that says gravitational forces on the string is neglected. So the forces acting on this element P Q in vertical direction E direction R only these two vertical component vertical components of the tension. So one is T one sine alpha, other one is T two sine beta. So now by Newton's second law. the resultant forces acting on the element pq in the vertical direction must be equal to mass into acceleration that is minus t1 sin alpha plus t2 sin beta you people know the reason again for this negative sign i have taken upward direction as the positive direction so this goes with the negative sign that is equal to mass into acceleration we know that density of the material is equal to mass per unit length in case of one dimension in two dimensional case it will be mass per unit area in three dimensional case it will be mass per unit volume right now we are discussing in one dimension so density is equal to mass per unit length as a result mass is equal to rho into delta x into acceleration is rate of change of velocity That is dou square u by dou t square. Okay, we got this one with the help of the Newton's second law and the gravitational forces on the string is neglected. That is from our assumption number three. Okay, now let me just go back and see what we have done now. Assumption number one just told us that so the tension will be acting only in the tangential direction. Assumption number two gave us this equation. Assumption number three helped us in deriving this equation. Let me proceed further to derive our wave equation. Now, just have a look at this equation and tell me what we have done in this. Yes, we are absolutely fine. We have just divided throughout by capital T. By looking at this capital T, your mind should go to this equation. Here we wrote capital T is T one cos alpha as well as T two cos beta. Definitely, people can expect the next step that is. T1 cos alpha and T2 cos beta in the denominator. So obviously it will be what tan alpha plus tan beta is equal to this expression. But what this tan alpha represents? Tan alpha is the slope of the curve of the string at the point P, and tan beta represents the same at the point Q. So tan alpha is equal to dou u by dou x at the point P. At the point P, the value of x is just I have taken it as x, and tan beta is the slope at the point Q, that is x plus delta x. X component is x plus delta x, that is at the point Q here. Now we know that u is function of x and t, so do u by do x is also function of x and t. And right now we have taken the x component is x plus delta x here, so tan beta should be. Do by do x of u of x component is x plus delta x comma t minus tan alpha is do u by do x with x component is x itself that is equal to the same expression. Now let me divide throughout by rho delta x divided by capital T. That says do square u by do t square is equal to capital T by rho and delta x is taken to the denominator. And you can note as this delta x goes to zero, this is the small element I have considered here. P Q is a small element. It is like Q is almost same as P. That is, if this delta x almost goes to zero, this expression becomes dou square u by dou x square. How do we get this one? Now let me have a look at this. If I consider y is a function of x, you know how to find dy by dx by using first principle. That is limit delta x tends to zero, new value minus the old value divided by x plus delta x minus x. Okay, so this is the first principle definition of dy by dx if y depends on the single variable. 
Suppose this f depends on more than one variable like this. If f is a function of x and t, I'll just include a t here, t in this place. You can note that this is exactly same as this definition. Only thing is t is written here and there is no change with respect to t. So which means this should be the definition of what? Partial differentiation of f with respect to x. That is dou f by dou x. Now, if I just observe this carefully, in the place of dou u by dou x, I have written f. So this is f of x plus delta x comma t minus f of x comma t. So if I take f is equal to dou u by dou x, like this one, this will be dou by dou x of dou u by dou x, which is dou square u by dou x square, which means we got this expression from this by employing first principle definition of the partial derivative on dou u by dou x. Okay, which means this is our required one dimensional wave equation, which will help us in finding the transverse vibrations of the string, where c square is given by capital T by rho, which is a constant for us. Okay, by solving this equation, we can find the value of u, so that will help us in finding the transverse vibrations of the string. Now just go back and see what and all we have done here. The first thing is, first very important thing is these three assumptions. The first assumption speaks about what? The tensions will act only in the tangential direction. Second assumption help us in deriving this equation. And third assumption will help us in getting this equation. Now by using this assumption equation number 2 and equation number 1, so equation number 1 and this equation, and on simplification, we ended with this wave equation. I hope you people are comfortable with this, with this derivation. If you have any doubts, so please come back. Thank you all.